Hello, my loves. Today we are the 31st of October. No, actually, we are the 30th. <laughs> Tomorrow we are the 31st, as I'm recording this. And what's the, what's the 31st of October? Right? You probably know it as Halloween. But Halloween finds its roots in an ancient Celtic celebration which was known as Sawine. Sawine is part of the eight Sabbaths of the Celtic Wheel of the Year, also known as the Witch's Wheel of the Year. And this is really based in the Wiccan tradition of like deep connection to the earth, to the moon, to the season, to the cyclical nature of life, where life was marked by eight celebrations throughout the year. The two solstices, the two equinoxes, and four celebrations in between. And so Sawine is the celebration that happens between the fall equinox and the winter solstice. It's that moment of the year where lights are getting longer, days are getting shorter, we're having more and more darkness physically, Sometimes emotionally, spiritually, and mentally as well, because all of those are connected. And so in the Celtic tradition, Sawan was really marking that division between the lighter half of the year in summer and the darker half of the year, the winter. And they believe that that division was also symbolizing the division between the spiritual and the material world. Sawain was really known as a time where the veil between both worlds was thinner and thinner and thinner. And that meant that we could communicate with the unseen. We could communicate with our ancestors. So ancient cells would make a beautiful table with a delicious meal and invite their ancestors to the table. But maybe other spirits would come as well. And they didn't want that. They just wanted to have a moment of connection with their loved ones. So they dressed up in scary outfits to scare the spirits away. And they would wear masks and costumes that would make sure that the spirits wouldn't recognize them and only their loved ones would know, oh, well, this is my person because they had a spiritual connection with them. They would also carry treats in their pockets so that if they did happen to see a spirit, they could just trick or treat them. <laughs> just give them a little treat and chase them away. Interesting, right? To see how some of that tradition survived today. So how did that become Halloween, right? Well, actually, we have to look back to the 19th century and the potato famine in Ireland particularly, because when that famine happened and people were starving, unfortunately, a lot of them fled and went to the U.S. And they brought their traditions, their way of life, their beliefs with them. And so they celebrated Sawine as well. But it kind of merged with the beliefs that were already in place there. And it's interesting to see that it merged with the American celebration of harvest, where they were carving pumpkins. And the cells, what they would do is that they would have lamps and walk around with lamps to scare away the spirits or to be able to see spirits. And so they carved pumpkins put lamps into it, and that became like their lantern. So, so much of our tradition and the way we celebrate Halloween today comes from the merging of what they would do in the U.S. at the time, what the Celts would do, what stayed out of that. But we just have lost that understanding. And so what we have to understand is that Sawine for the Celts was the end of a cycle and the beginning of a new cycle. Those people were really understanding and living according to the understanding that life was cyclical. 
There was no real end and no beginning. And the end meant that there was a new beginning. And they understood that. They had that wisdom. They held that wisdom from the moon, from observing the moon. Because when you look at the moon, the moon has four phases. The new moon, the waxing moon, I think, the full moon, and then the waning moon. And what is the new moon? The new moon is the dark moon. It's when you cannot see the moon in the sky. So the new cycle of the moon begins with three days and three nights where we cannot see the moon. Darkness is a birther for new beginnings. And Sawine teaches us that too. Because the six weeks from Sawine to the winter solstice are some of the darkest weeks right? The days are getting shorter and shorter and shorter. The nights, the darkness is getting longer and longer and longer, all the way to the winter solstice, where the sun comes back. The light comes back. And light is life. So life comes back. And we start to energetically see the beginning of spring. And so those six weeks that we are stepping into are our dark moon phase, which is synonym of new beginnings. Which is why we really celebrate Sawine um, by connecting with the unseen, by connecting with our ancestors and asking guidance for our ancestors. Because our ancestors who actually lived in ancient America or ancient Ireland and within those ancient cultures, they truly believe that someone was a time of prophecy, of dreaming the future, of connecting what, with what was possible, of connecting with the unseen and receiving guidance for your unique path. And while it's fun to get all dressed up and trick or treat and carve pumpkins, this is not what wine is about. This is not what Halloween is about. This is about celebrating the end of a chapter and calling in the new one, releasing what you still need to release to allow the new chapter to begin. Sit in the darkness, even though it might be uncomfortable because we are not taught to sit into that darkness. And really let it transform you. Darkness is a birther. Darkness is a transformer. Every man is born from the dark womb of a mother. Every flower comes out of the dark soil of the earth. Every day begins at midnight when it is pitch black dark. Because the darkness is a birther, a transformer, an alchemist. So welcome the darkness into your life which means welcome the shorter days, welcome the uncertainty. I know many of you are experiencing it right now, and I have been in my own death rebirth journey, which I'm going to be talking about much more in the next episode next week. I'm going to be teaching about that and what I realize and learn from it. Because I believe that stories are so insightful, and I have some questions that I will be sharing with you. But I know so many of you have been experiencing that. As we are nature as well, and we are guided by the seasons to go through our own death rebirth journeys. And sometimes they are aligned with the seasons, sometimes not. But understanding that nature goes through these cycles, we go through these cycles, and Sawine is the opportunity to celebrate the end of a cycle and the beginning of a new one. It's... Um, Deeply, I was going to say deeply healing, but it's much more than that. It's deeply activating of your true essence. We celebrate in our modern day, the new year, January 1st, but it actually begins now. It's now. It's now that it's happening. So, boom, boom, boom. let me see if there was something else that I wanted to share with you. Yes. 
this wisdom is very ancient and it's very interesting to see that not only people from old Europe were celebrating this transition right now. When we go to India, they have the festival of Diwali and Diwali is their own New Year. It's a festival of color and light. You see, it's all these images where you see paint and like colored powder being thrown at everyone in the street. Coldplay has done an amazing, really stunning video <laughs> with the celebration of Diwali. If you've never seen it, I don't remember for which song it is, but I'm sure you can find it. And Diwali is the end of a cycle and the beginning of a new one. And guess what? Diwali happens in November. It's always at a different date, but um, this year in 2023, it's going to happen November 12th. So just a few days after October 31st, November 1st, which is Sawain. Could it be that Sawain and Diwali have a similar root in antiquity? Could it be that those cultures that, when we look at them, seem to have nothing in common? Could it be that they have the same grandfather, a similar ancestor? Interesting thing to explore, right? Now let's go and have a look at another culture, Mexico. In Mexico, the 31st of October is known as the Dia de la Muerte, the day, no, sorry, Dia de los Muertos, the day of the dead. They also celebrate the dead at the same dates. But they do it in a very different way because while they also wear masks and costumes and it's often like skeletons and all of that, it's done in a very playful, colorful way. It's more about celebrating life than connecting with death, right? So it's celebrating the life of those who were alive at some point and then passed away. But again, it's that same theme of death. It's that same theme of the ending of a cycle and a new cycle, the ending of a life and the beginning of the afterlife. Now is really a time of transition. Can you really sense it in the air? It's really powerful. And once you can tap into that energy, you harness the power of it for your own life, for your own alignment, for your own awakening and accessing your true potential. So I am not going to leave you just with that information. I am going to help you in doing that right now. So there are different ways that you can honor the energies of Sawain. And first of all, it's to decorate your altar in, with the elements that are going to call that energy. So the element that is actually connected with Sawain is the earth. So if you can bring that earthly grounding, you know, the earth is an incubator as well, where I was just talking about the rose that comes out of the dark soil of the earth, right? And the earth is that feminine energy, that incubator, alchemist, transformer that we are, birthers that we are, and that the feminine energy is. So it's about bringing that feminine earthly energy to your altar. You can do that with crystals such as red jasper, amber as well. You can also put pictures of your ancestors on your altar. Something that I personally love to do is that one of my grandmothers really loved Lapsang Sushong tea. If you don't know that tea, it's a smoky tea. People either love it or hate it. But because I just learned to love it with her, she was always making that tea when we would come and see her. And it's, it's like a thing that's known in our family. Every time we have Lapsang Sushang, it's like, oh, but maman, <laughs> we just think about her. And so when I want to connect with her, I am preparing that tea. And I prepare a cup for her and a cup for myself. And I have a little tea ceremony at my altar and I let her enjoy the energy of the tea. And you can do that as well. Was there a meal that you used to love to share with your grandmother or that your grandmother told you, taught you? 
um, just something. It can be a picture or an object, but our ancestor loved ones and spirit guides, they take the energy of, um, I was going to say living beings, but like things that are alive, but at the same time, everything is alive, everything is energy. But so if you want to connect with your grandmother, make that intentionally, prepare it intentionally and put it at your altar, one for her, one for you, and then eat it, drink it in a very ceremonial way. And close your eyes, have a meditation, and let anything that one that's coming through, let it come through. Ask her for guidance. What would she say to you? How would she support you? Allow yourself to receive her love. Uh, maybe pull an oracle card. If you are not hearing or receiving or feeling anything, maybe, you know, have that little ceremonial moment and then do an oracle card pulling. Or tarot cards, or there's a beautiful card from Rebecca Campbell, or Alana Fairchild. There are many, many amazing women who have done powerful decks. Um, use them because this is a time for divination. This is a time for dreaming the future. This is a time for asking for guidance. And so if you want to put more energy on your altar, because the more living beings, like I said, you put on your altar, the more the unseen is going to use the energy from these elements. And then take it out and then use it to support you. This is how it works. You know, Einstein said, Nothing dies, everything transforms. So if you put an apple on your altar, the spirit guides that are there to support you will take the energy of that apple, use it in the unseen and transform it into an opportunity for you or a person that's going to say something or whatever it is that you need and that you might understand. And so food items that you can put on your altars are apples, Pumpkins, squash, corn, oranges, and bread. If you can make your bread yourself while singing mantras and pouring love and prayer in your bread, even better. But if you don't have an altar yet, or this isn't resonating with you, I have some journaling prompts for you. So I have four questions for you that are going to help you really tap into this new beginning energy that is present right now. What do I still need to release and let die now? It's still time to let go. Don't hold on to what you think is safe. Because you are safe already. So what do I need to release and let die now? So that I can let the real me be expressed. Question number two. What do my ancestors want me to know? What do my ancestors want me to know? What do I desire to create in this new cycle? Question three. What do I desire to create in this new cycle? This is a time to start dreaming the future, to allow yourself to envision, to sit in the darkness. If you can sit for a few hours, do a meditation in the dark with just a candle on, this is going to activate your pineal gland. And your pineal gland is like an antenna that can help you receive guidance. From a physiological perspective, your pineal gland releases melatonin. And we often know that, I mean, we often say, and we know that melatonin triggers sleep. But that's not the only thing it does. The pineal gland also creates brain waves that are there to help you have mystical experiences, visions, prophecy, to receive guidance. This is why we call it the third eye. It helps you to see. So what do I see for my future? What do I want to create in this next cycle? And then finally, fourth question, what am I calling in 
in the coming year? What do I want to receive? What am I calling in? Get really clear and specific on what you are calling in, what you want to receive in the coming cycle. So four questions to honor the energies of Sawine and really support you in this transition. Many, many blessings to you. Let me know how this, I was going to say ritual, but you can make it into a whole ritual and ceremony, all the things that I have shared. Let me know how it goes. And I am excited to hear from you.